What's good, everybody? It's your boy Uncle Sands Reject here, and welcome back to the channel, boys. We're back with some more of the UGA Hoops Dynasty here. And now, as you guys can see, we are no longer on NCAA Basketball 10. We are currently on College Hoops 2K8, the greatest college basketball game to ever exist. And I had to make the switch, boys. I made a community post. I made a community tab post let you guys know we will be officially making a switch. I know I left it up for a vote for you guys, but I've been trying to play EA, man, and the game play has just been abysmal. It's been terrible, and I don't feel like it gives you guys the best viewing experience. Now, what we have done with that, man, we have went ahead and ported over our recruiting class. So, I simmed the season. You know what I mean? I simmed the season forward in this, uh, in this universe, just like we just finished the season. I had the same exact rosters, except these are completely finished the whole entire country. So, we got our top recruits, Gomer, Gomer Church, Tim Pace, we got Tyson Butts, we got Sam Gay, and then we also got Koku Mangum. Now, the ratings are going to be a little bit differently. They were high 70s in EA. 2K and EA have always had a different rating system. EA has always been more on the lower end. And Jabri Abdul Rahim was a 75 overall. And all of these guys were starters over him and Oquindo and Mangum in, in Edder. So I went ahead and went with the time. So. 80-something uh, overall in this game isn't OP. It isn't crazy. They're still going to miss shots. They're still going to be bad. It's still a long way to go. Now, the person who made these rosters, you know what I mean? Let me let me, let me go ahead and show you, you know what I mean, as, as we just become uh, familiar with what we got going on. Let me show you, like, some of the top players in the nation. Let's go to the ACC. Um, you know what I'm saying? Let's go to the ACC. Let's go to a team like Duke. So you see, like, uh, A.J. Griffin, who stayed in school, was at 88. Paulo Banquero was like a was like a ninety was like a ninety three. You see, Mark Williams is at eighty seven. Let's go to another top team like UNC. Uh, Curran Walton eighty five. Armando Baycott at eighty nine. R.J. Davis just at eighty three. I feel like that's low. Caleb Love went to the league. Let's think of another team that will have you know what I'm saying a lot of big name guys there and will have like high overalls. Teams that where guys didn't necessarily graduate. Um, and another thing is, boys, I did a sim in five-star recruits in this game are like 84, 85 overall. Look at EJ Little. Um, so, you know what I mean? Top players, recruits, a five-star recruit is going to be like an 85, 84. Even I've seen as high as an 86. So, when it comes to our guys like Gomer Church and Tim Pace, I pretty much did most of their stats straight from EA, and this is what we got. But, you know what I mean? They're 83, 82. Uh, Tim Pace was a McDonald's All-American, Gomer Church was, you know what I'm saying, a top 100 player. Tyson Butts, top 100 player. Sam Gay was a top 100 player. You know what I mean? Th these guys were four stars. These guys were five, guys were five stars. So I put them in that in-between stage, you know what I mean? And I had to make sure they were good enough to start over the guys that um, they were starting over on the EA side of things. So take a look at our starting line of players. going to look the same, except for Noah Bauman. Noah Bauman, another thing with EA, you can't change the class of the player. Noah Bauman wasn't supposed to be coming back to us next year. He's a senior. He was a senior IRL. You know what I mean? Last season during these rosters. So he's gone. So we got Wright, Church, Butts, Pace, Gay. That was, uh, you know what I mean, our, our, our supposed start, our start lineup. Jabri Abdul Rahim coming off the bench. Oquindo, Edder, Rig Rignall, Taylor, Baker, uh, McDowell. Um, you know what I mean? We're actually going to redshirt him. And remember, we were also redshirting Koku Mangum. So he would be redshirted as well. Baker and Taylor aren't, I mean, excuse me, Baker isn't redshirted, I don't believe. So he's just going to be down there. And then we got Taylor still going to be rocking out. So everybody is the exact same except for uh, Ballman just because he retired, excuse me, he graduated in these uh, in these rosters, so he's no longer with us. I might seem like I'm going to ramble uh, for a little bit here during the start of this series, boys, but trust me, just hold on to your horses. We're going to make it all make sense. Another top thing about this game is the recruiting. Now, as you can see, we have, we have freshmen, sophomore, juniors, seniors, and junior college players all on our target list. Now, the thing about this game you want to do you start recruiting your players, top players that you want to bring into your program from the time they are freshmen, you know, so from junior to below. So from the time they're freshmen in high school, you know what I mean? You get, you you start recruiting them, you put them on your list. You can only really request game tape. You can't really start to really recruit them until they're juniors. And you see here with number seven on his list, the longer we keep him on our list and we keep talking to him and checking in on him every single year, we're going to slowly go up on his list until his junior year where we can aggressively recruit him. And then as his senior year is when we're going to actually hardcore recruit him and either offer him his scholarship. So take a look here. These two freshmen I got on the top of my list, right? So right here we got Ryan, right? Uh, small four freshman, 
This is his ABL team, a.k.a. the AAU circuit. So in the summertime when you're recruiting, you can go play in or sim through the AAU circuit to check in on the guys that you're recruiting to see how they're developing, if they're getting taller, how much points they're averaging. You also unlock certain attributes when you recruit those guys in the summertime. That way you have to spend a lot less time on recruiting and actually, you know what I'm saying, um, uh, a lot less points on scouting and things of that nature. So you can look at things from attributes, which is some things we, we already got th some certain things unlocked for these two guys up top. Cause you know what I mean? We, we've been, we've been requesting tape. Uh, you can take a look at stats and then also there's going to show you their interest level. Now, don't, you don't have to run away and be scared of this interest level. You know what I'm saying? Depending on the type, the year they are in school. So for instance here, let's take a look at these junior college guys, right? Torrance Fontanet, 62%, you know, interested in our school, right? So we're, we got him on our list. We're going to make up. Uh, we're going to try to actually recruit him and get him to come to our school. You know what I mean? Depending on how heavily the other schools are recruiting him, we can jump over him just like any other college game. Do you got guys like WC Amos? Only 65%, but we're number one on his list. Then you got guys like Braden Catalinas. Number one on his list, just 75%. 76% for Bolton. White. You know what I'm saying? 81%, so that's pretty high. But nobody really has a chance to come and grab him unless we just drop the ball. Then you got guys like Victor Bonfam. 58 interest, right? Four-star recruit from Brazil. So you can recruit people from other countries. You know what I'm saying? We're the only one on his list, the only D1 school that is expressing interest in him. You know what I'm saying? So we have an upper hand. Some teams do swoop in late. You know what I'm saying? To show interest and say if a team just won a national championship or something, they will probably automatically jump over Victor because he didn't know he was on their radar. And once he is, you know what I'm saying, we're, they're going to immediately jump us just like a big name recruit would if a uh, you know a blue blood school like North Carolina or Kentucky would come after him in real life. And then, you know, you see here we got Kyle Lang, a junior we're going after. 62%, but we're pretty much even with everybody in front of us. 73% for Barlow. We're in his top five. 74% for Fanning. You know what I'm saying? We are in his top five and number two. Then here for the sophomores, 55%. We're number one, 60%. You know what I mean? So forth and so on. You guys are going to, you guys get the picture and you're going to get the picture as we go throughout this whole entire journey. Now, it says we have seven available scholarships. Like I said, I assimilated this season. Their computer didn't recruit. So we have a bunch of walk-ons. That's why the guys I created are walk-ons. So I am going to end up using up all these scholarships just because if I don't use up the scholarships, the more scholarships I do not use, the more walk-ons they're going to put on our team. And it's going to be jumbled up. So I might as well get it out the way as quickly as possible. Now, another thing you can see here, instead of going into a bunch of little screens, pertinent information we can see right here at our legacy main hub. So we know what's coming up with our schedule here. We can select certain things to go to, you know what I'm saying? Instead of always having to go to schedule, we take a look at how our roster is currently doing with our starting five. Take a look at their confidence. Once that goes down or up, we can give them pep talks. It helps us keep track of rec recruiting and let's know our recruiting points, how many recruiting points we have left for the week and how many scholarships we have available, how many uh, scholarships we offer. And then, of course, we can take a look at development here, you know what I mean, and get to development. And then you come over here to the Sim Central. It'll let us know conference standings. It'll let us know team leaders. It'll let us know who's injured. And it'll let us know what games we have next on the schedule. And another thing we have going for ourselves, one of my favorite aspects of this game, we get to start off every, every season with March Madness. We get to get a live look at the recruits we bring in and the guys, you know what I mean, that stay, that have gotten better. Take a look at how they progress. Now, this is going to be starters versus subs. Now, of course, you could mix it up and things like that, but I want to get a good feel of what my starting lineup is going to be like. And remember, we do have a couple people that are registered, like Mangum. He's registered, but he's still going to get a chance to play. Same thing with McDowell. They're going to keep this year of eligibility locked as long as they don't play in any real games. So that's going to work out in our favor. All right, boys. So, but also another thing before we jump into Midnight Madness, is something I wanted to show you guys. We do have to go over the sliders. Now, if I remember, I will put the slider set in the description. We're gonna rock out with simulation play mode, MOP, which is the hardest difficulty. As of right now, 13 minute halves. Sim, sim halves are gonna be 20. Game speed 60, player speed 50, free throw difficulty 50. Injuries and fatigue on, six man on. We're going to leave a lot of this uh, stuff on. Game rules are going to be all the same. It's going to be college rules. We're not going to be changing anything. And then game sliders, man, take a look at the difference between my sliders and the computer sliders. Now, these sliders are for, like, the All-American difficulty, but we decided to use it on MOP. And I have been running it, you know what I'm saying, off-cam in my spare time. Pretty legit, pretty solid, pretty fair. Should be a good time. All right, boys, here we are getting ready for this game. It's a pack house here in Stegman Arena, I believe it's called. Now, here we go. Hopefully, we don't get embarrassed by the second unit out here. But you guys are going to see the difference in gameplay and the ways we can play this game. We can get to the basket. 
You know what I mean? It, it's going to look like real life basketball for the most part. A little pick and roll action. We got to catch that. Not a clean catch. Pace gets it. Unable to knock down the free throw. I mean, the little hook shot. And look, uh, we can play defense. You know what I mean? We, we usually can get a strip there. Not every time, of course. It's not going to be cheesy. They're bringing the press here early. Now, Wright is the only returning player in the starting lineup because he's the only guard we have. I want, can't wait to see what Gomer and uh, Sam Gay and these boys are going to do as he comes down with a board there. Let's go. Now, I don't know if we're going to play all the way through this game. I should have lowered the halves, honestly, or maybe we'll just play, you know what I'm saying, through like the first half because the score doesn't save. It really doesn't matter. It's just to get, uh, you know what I mean, the, the student body and the, and, the, and the fans hype for the upcoming season, boys. And I've been waiting to get to this season for us to be a little bit more competitive and stuff. Oh, we're going to throw the outlet pass. I don't like it. Can we get butts to the basket? Can we do, hey, throwing it down at the rim. You know what I mean? Like, if, for those of you guys that, that are not familiar with this game or never played this game, you guys are going to learn why, why this game is so heavily revered amongst the, you know, the college basketball uh, circle. And, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, why, why, why we wish this is the game that we had all the way up to 2010. Because NBA, NBA 2K10 was fire. So just imagine, you know what I mean, college troops 2K10. Gomer wide open. I got to learn these jumpers, man. I'm a little off on those. We're good. We're good. We're good. Good D. Good D. Run the break. Finish. And one ref. No call is crazy, but it's all good. As you see here in this game, we're able to finish through contact. You know what I mean? Just like the computer, unlike, you know what I'm saying, NCAA. I mean, yeah, NCAA 10. Man, Gom. I said he wasn't a shooter, but I'm going to keep letting that thing go. I think that's butts I'm confusing him with. So I hear him when you trap and when you, when you when you press. Like, everything seems more organic and more free. You know what I mean? No, no more of that sideline cheese. Pace getting to the rack. And one. Let's go. Let's see if we can get that skip pass over there. Good pass. I need that one. Yes, sir. There we go, Gomer. I want to see I want to see what Gomer could do. All right, working around, working around. Gomer calling for the ball down low. Can he finish it? He can. Let's go. He knows a mismatch when he sees one. Let's get it, baby. Cup, who's with me? Right getting to the basket. Spin move. Lay. Smoked. Church calling for the ball in the post once again. Going for a nice little hook, and he gets it to go. That's a shooting guard, boys. Let's go. But y'all, let me know who y'all think is going to be the best, the best freshman this season, boys. Good block by Gay. Of course, man, you know, we're going to have, like, the sim part of their game, and we're going to have the us playing every, you know what I mean, the games we play part of their game. Which is going to be two, which is going to be two different, you know what I mean, types of, uh, types of gameplay. But who you guys think is going to be the freshman of the year on our team? One thing I'm thinking about doing in my series, man, we're going to give out, like, team awards. My guy T&J does this, right? He gives out team awards, and, you know what I mean, whoever wins a certain team award gets, like, plus two to a – to an attribute or to their overall or something like that. So if we get a freshman of the year, a player of the year, defensive player of the year, stuff like that, you know what I mean, like to, to make things more fun, throw the lob. The lob didn't go up. Damn, it's just a regular pass. Tim Pace running the break. Throw it down, big fella. Hey, let's go. Let's get this trap going. One thing I love about college sports, man, the, the traps and the presses and everything like that. Good D. Almost got a 10 seconds. Oh, we're for the steal. We're back. And another thing, man, like, so, like, you know, limited – when it comes to uh, change of players in NCAA, wow, Quindo knocks that down. Is I thought I found out Quindo was a shooting guard. He's not even a a, a a power forward like he is in NCAA. But when you when you replace certain players, man, you can't change their position and stuff like that. Boom, good move by Gay. Let's go high off the glass. Seven four. You're not blocking that, baby. Looking for him. Good pass. I need that. Ah, it's off. Pace on the boards though. Finish. Hey. Looks like they might hold for like the last shot. Not if we have anything to say about it. Pace on the steal. Get to the rack, big fella. Hey! First lead of the day. Turning it around. Let's go. But I like that, you know, it's a risk reward that comes with uh with the press and with the trap. You know what I mean? The computer's gonna find the open man. That's a good midi. Ah, uh, we gotta get that up. Put that up right. I need one. Ah. All right, man. Going into the locker room. Starters are up 30 to 29, bro. Let's go. Good move. Good fade. Get in there. Give us the roll. Let's go. Tim Pace with the midi. Fade away midi. Ten points here in this March Man. I mean, in this Midnight Madness. I don't know why I keep saying March Madness. Good D, fellas. We don't really have a back, have a point guard. That's why Edder's getting ripped. He's just kind of playing point guard. Gomer is like our backup point guard. Good move. Ah, good D. Hey, we get the foul call, though. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, the list and stuff like that. But right now, weak ass double team. Get off me, little boy. Let's go. Good shot by game. When you're 7-4, you can shoot over two. You know what I mean? But I, I want to see, like, um, 
I want you guys to know what we're going after, why we're going after it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be a lot more stuff that could be more in-depth. And like I'm telling you, with the recruiting and stuff, boys, the stories are going to write themselves as we follow these players throughout their whole entire high school careers. So, like, for a team like us, man, that's coming off of a struggling season, you know what I'm saying? We're not going to be able to get a lot of, you know, big-name high school recruits, right? So, we're going to focus on the Juco guys here early. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and the guys from other countries, the world recruits and things of that nature, that's going to be how we build our team to prominence and we, so we can get some of these top recruits. Come move there by Gay. Get banged on. Let's go, baby. So that's going to be like our, our rise to fame, man. Like, we're going to be like, we're gonna be like the, uh, the last chance you pickers. You feel me? All the guys from Juco that need second chance that might be too small for their position, we're going we're gonna to bring them in down to Athens, bro. You know what I mean? And we're going to build our program that way. And, but uh, to you know, but like we're going to be able to get some top recruits as we uh as we recruit them from the time they're young. That's the best thing. Why is he playing there? Butts is not a shooter, and I keep shooting the damn ball. Taylor going up, unable to get it to go. Back him up. You know, what I mean, he got he got to respect it. We're going to just shoot over those seven four, bro. He he's not going to be able to get a good contest there. You made this a lot more enjoyable, and and Gomer still asking for the ball down in the post, bro. And he keeps making other guards pay. I'm not mad, here, bro. I see you. Gomer, I need one. Bang. Okay. I figured out the jumper. It's like Ray Allen's. You know what I mean? We got a, we got a double digit lead. Let's go, fellas. But as you guys can see here, man, none, none of my players are like OP. So, you know what I mean? I did a good job with, with the with the ratings and, you know, transferring the guys over. You know what I mean? But yeah, man, y'all let me know down in the comment section below. Like, how y'all feeling this so far? Too much room. Too much room. Now, when you hot, you hot, though. Oh, that's how you break the press. That's how you break the press and one. Let's go, baby. All right, boys. So the starters end up winning this game by 15, 75, 60. So I feel like the scoring is pretty solid on 13-minute quarters, man. Take a look at the box score. Wright only had two, but he facilitated five assists, two steals. 18 for Church on six for 13, three for seven. Butts had six on two for four. He's a slasher, but I kept forgetting and taking threes. Pace with 20, Gay with 24. So this is going to be like our one-two punch with the bigs. And some of our bench guys, Jabri, we already knew Jabri was a bucket. Edder surprised me, and he facilitated. Oquindo did what he did, did, did what, he, what I expected him to do, and Baker played well also, man. So, you know what I mean? McDowell is going to be redshirt this year, so is Mangan. So they're going to be key contributors to the bench, off the bench next season. Welcome to 2K Sports Studios. I'm Greg Gumbel with Clark Kellogg. We're here with the 2K Sports Season Preview Show. Here are the top five teams in the nation as we head into the season. The Auburn Tigers come in as the number one ranked team, followed by Louisville, North Carolina, Alabama, and Tennessee. Auburn is in the catbird seat to start the season, sitting pretty in the number one spot. Certainly, they'll get a big boost from the return of their leading scorer from a year ago. That's a big advantage for them. They don't have to spend the first few weeks of the season searching for that go-to guy. There were a lot of coaching changes this offseason, and we'll tell you all about them. You now see all the coaches who will be heading to new programs. Some very substantial changes can be seen, that's for sure. The Duke coach is one of the hires that drew a lot of media attention. The Duke Blue Devils have a lot of fans that are delighted to have a coach of his ability. Clark. His personality and this university seem to be a perfect match for each other, Greg. We've come to the part of the show when we look at the top players in the nation and unveil the list of our preseason All-American. There before you are the five first-team All-Americans as we begin the season, and what a list it is. The Alabama Crimson Tide are going to ask this young man to carry the load for them all season, Clark. Davidson is the first player on the list for good reason. It isn't out of the realm of possibility to say that he might even be a little bit underrated. I know it seems far-fetched to say that about a preseason All-American pick, but I'm not sure people realize just what a huge year he's in for, Greg. As we move to the second team All-Americans, we can see there's no shortage of talent with this group. They're all elite players with the potential to dominate the game. All right, Clark, that should do it for us here in the studio. For myself and all of us here at 2K Sports, thanks for watching our season preview. Enjoy all of the College Hoops action to come, everyone. So as you can see, boys, our work is cut out for us starting off with this series, man. A lot of NBA players, a lot of NBA talent stayed in school for another year. So this isn't going to be easy by any means. J.D. Davidson is the number one player in the nation preseason, and he's in our conference going to Alabama. So this is going to be tough, man. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the switch up. I'm telling you, 
This is for you guys, man. This game is so much better than NCAA. It's not even close, man. Once we really jump in and dive into recruiting and get to these off seasons and stuff like that, it's going to be insane. And it's going to be more of the same like NCAA, boys. We're still going to be simming a good portion of the season because there's so many, you know what I'm saying, games in basketball seasons and stuff like that. So, you know what I mean? Expecting me to play all 30 games a year is nuts. We're going to play some key games. We're going to play some key out-of-conference games. You know what I mean? The first game of the season, the conference, I mean, you know, conference opener, you know what I mean? Conference tournament, and hopefully NCAA tournament, boys. But it's going to be one hell of a ride as I'm looking forward to see what is next for us. And you know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? Next episode will be out soon where we open up our season versus uh, MEAC. So with that, man, we will be back soon with the season opener. We will be taking on Hampton. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get a deep dive into recruiting so I can show you guys what recruiting looks like week in and week out. And we're going to prepare to hopefully make it to the tournament this season, man. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, stop and smash that like button. Hit me up in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. It's your boy Uncle Sam's Reject on RKGames.com. I'm out of here. Peace. Hey. <laughs> niggas want me to lose, but I can't. I've been stacking this shit to the ceiling. Know some niggas with bodies, and it ain't no probably. We never speak on them killers. Everybody on my block go get them some money. It's only a couple of drillers. I've been fucking them hoes, man. Them bitches ain't nobody. Boy, get the fuck out your feelings. Drop my son off to school in the morning. After that, I headed straight to the bank.